but you don't know him yet. But you're praying in the mosque, in the Saflawu, behind the Imam, in the best place. But you don't know him yet. You worship him and you're accepted. Allah so mercifully accepts you. You bring Allah your nafs amara, your nafs which is resisting him. You're all, you're all, all that is. You know your nafs is amara when there's a command of the sharia and you walk away from it. You know your nafs is amara when there's, you, you're fulfilling the commands and you can't even do a sunnah. Remember Junaid Baghdadi? You heard of this man who claimed he was a wali of Allah? Remember him? And he said, let's go see who he is. Let's go find out. So they walk to see the man, and the man leaves his house, and Junaid, his student, his disciples, are following him. They're all waiting to see what's going to happen. This man who's a wali of Allah. And he goes, and the man's walking, and he, and he walks, he spits, and he spits in the direction of a Qibla. And then Junaid did not give him his salam, and he said, he knows nothing. If he was truly in his claim, he would not have left one of the adabs of Rasulullah. But when he spat, he spat to his left, not towards the direction of the Qibla. That's how you know. Now see, that was, you know, but there are degrees of that. So, your nafs is a mara. Your nafs is combative. You know, young guys here, you know, you wait to the young Muslims, you know, you all love it. Like, you go out, you know, you to the gym, you're working out. I lived in Australia, man. It's like, Muslims in Australia, they're like, you're like, you're like you know, gym freaks, man. I mean, it's like, they're all gyms in the mosque, gyms here, and they're all like, working out, like, I don't know why. You know, it's like, it's all this, it's all this, like, you know, peacocking, young guys peacocking, flexing their muscles in their, in their chest, you know, wearing muscle shirts. You know, it's like, impress the hijabi girls. You know. And you know, you, you, know, you all worry about your hair and your beard and hot looks, you know, and you all how you all look cool, and you know, you know, Muslim cool, you know, you know. So you make sure your thobe matches your jeans or something like that. I have issues with that, that combo, you know, thobes and jeans. I'm not quite sure they go together. Uh, but anyway, you know, you're really into yourself and your young people. Young people are always like into themselves. You know, it's, 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 you know, it's your nature. And um, but. That's how you are in this, in this reality of your life. And you go distracted. It's your nafs amara. In one moment you want to be obedient to Allah, and one moment you pull away. And then you know that, that's, that's how you know. One of the things you have the sharia for is, this, is, a, is a metric. I like the metric. It's very British. It's your metric of your relationship with Allah Subhanahu So you measure it. This is what Sir Hindi says, Ahmad Sir Hindi. He, he talks about the Sabbath. He isn't getting a lot of metaphysical mumbo jumbo and trying to eat. Well, young people are always like into themselves. You know, it's, 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 you know, it's your nature. And um, but that's how you are in this in this reality of your life. And you go distracted. It's your nafs amara. In one moment you want to be obedient to Allah, and one moment you pull away. And then you know that that's that's how you know. One of the things you have the Sharia for is this is a is a metric. I like the word metric. It's very British. It's your metric of your relationship with Allah Subhanahu wa So you measure it. This is what Sir Hindi says. I'm Sir Hindi. He, he talks about the Sabbath. He isn't getting a lot of metaphysical mumbo jumbo and trying to impress you with weird poetry you have to decipher. He lays it out straight. He's like straight cuts to all of it. He says you measure it by your relationship to the Sharia. If your relationship with the Sharia is like that then that's how you are with God. Your nafs is not yet in a state of Ibn'an. And the Sharia isn't even there to bring your nafs to a state of Ibn'an, by the way, he says. What's it for, Tabi? From our talks. Why is the Sharia fundamentally given? To bring what to a state of balance? It's not about the soul. How many of you guys always like to complain about your nafs? My nafs made me do it. Oh, my nafs made me do that. My nafs, my nafs, my nafs, my nafs. I've got a really bad nafs night. Everyone's got a nafs, man. It makes it, it's, 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 it's part of you, man. MashaAllah, it's great. Don't complain about it. The nafs actually, through dhikr, can become tranquil. That's not a problem. The problem is your physical body. The Sharia is given to you to serve your body. Haven't you ever wondered why most of the Sharia rulings are about the physical things of your body? About how you interact with your body? About thieves that steal with their hands? And men and women that commit adultery with their bodies? 
Because and why is that? Because your body and your soul are on a journey together. Their destinies are bound together. But since you are of the earth, in the Torah, from the earth, your body is attached to the earth. It clings to the earth. The body does not want to soar. The body doesn't aspire to paradise. The only reason the body aspires to paradise is why? So it gets the gold and the silver and the hurayim. That's why your body aspires to paradise. Because your body understands those things. But that's not your heart. That's not what it is. So, the Sharia, according to Sahindi, is, is here to serve and protect your body, to bring it into equilibrium. You have dietary restrictions. And when you read through the rulings of the Sharia, as scholars have extracted from the Quran and Sunnah and laid out for you a plan, a Sharia based life plan, is to keep you in a good life. Not to eat too much, eat healthy things. Not to, for example, an example, I'll give you an example. I like this example. The, 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 the sin of the problem is to, when you kill an animal, is to treat it kindly. Sharpen your knife. Relieve the suffering. The concept of proper husbandry of animals. Don't be cruel to them. Don't make a woman the prostitute who ties the cat up. Or doesn't feed the dog. These stories you hear about, and you read about them. And the great punishment of cruelty to animals. Uh -huh. And so the Sharia wants you to have, according to the Sunnah, and operate, as it operationalizes the Sunnah, that you have a little bit of respect for animals. You relieve their suffering. It's not just before the knife is put to the throat, but the whole process before. Okay. But you're out there buying your halal chicken from these poor birds that are, I call them Guantanamo chickens. Chickens in cages. Depressed chickens. <laughs> They're so depressed that when you buy organic eggs and you buy the white, those white eggs from those depressed chickens, just get a micron measure and measure the thickness of the eggshells. Those chickens that are free range, happy clucking chickens, with all their feathers intact because they're not in a cage where each, other, each, each chicken is clucking at each other and pecking at each other out of nervousness, only to end up after they've been popped out 25 eggs, they're off to the slaughterhouse. Well, the Bismillah machine kills them. How do you manage that? Our technology at work. And this organic hen, she's out there clucking around the farm, and she crushes a, a space, and she's able to scratch around, and she loves that. Chickens love to scratch and peck. Her feathers are intact, but she's not confined. And when she lays that egg that you buy, it's thick shell. Its yolk isn't pale yellow, but it's dark orange. And there are no chemicals, but she's not been eating recycled dead hens. It has to be given hormones and, and antibiotics to keep them healthy in those cages. That's the chicken you want to, eat, to take your eggs from, and that's the one you want to make halal, because their living flesh is haram. That's the sunnah. But what, we, what do we get? We don't care. So you go to your shop over here, your chicken roast shop down the street, you get your big thing of fries, your bag of fries, and that delicious roast chicken from the Gua Guantanamo hen. You eat depressed meat from a depressed chicken who was murdered <coughs> by a machine. It's like, you know, it's like watching, uh, you know, something like, a, you know, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and his Terminator. The chicken was killed by a machine. We don't even have the decency to be human beings. We, we let machines do what is a sacred act of taking the life of a living creature. Why? Because we demand the life of chicken in our community. We demand the bros. And you take that into your body, and just as Hajj Aswad turned black because the Mushrikun 